Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Marco, and I'm working at, at PipeDrive. And today, I'm going to talk about TypeScript and developer experience. Uh, but before, I have some questions for you. Uh, how many of you have used TypeScript before? Just raise your hand. OK, yeah, a few. Cool. And who is using uh, at work? OK, less, but still someone. Uh, and who would love to, to use TypeScript? Okay. Cool. It's just to be how much familiar are you with uh, TypeScript. Uh, so developer experience. Uh, before I start this presentation, I thought about the meaning of the words developer and experience. And according to the Oxford Dictionary, a developer means uh, a person or a thing that develop something. And experience means an event which leaves an impression on someone. So according to me, uh, developer experience means describes the experience of a person when building or using something. So as a developer, uh, for example, if we are using an external API, we are expecting that they are using the correct HTTP verbs, for example. Or if we are using an external library, we expect that library works at least, and it, it, it is well documented. Um, so what are the requirements to have a, a good developer experience? First of, first of all, it should be functional. So when we are building something or using something, we expect a result. And um, for example, if we are using a library, we expect that library works. So what is the meaning of uh, using something that does not work? So, um, it should be functional. It should be maintainable. So it should be readable, uh, easy to refactor, and consistency. Today we are writing uh, a piece of code. And tomorrow, probably someone will change it or are going to read our code. So we want them to provide a good experience. It should be scalable. And for scalable, I mean, I mean it should be natural to add new functionalities. or if someone new joins our team, we want to provide uh, that person a good experience. Then he can quickly adapt to the project. It should be productive. So we should like automate every task. Uh, for example, like running tests, or if we are building a, an HTTP server and if we change a file, uh, we want to, um, our server to restart and to reflect the changes. Also, uh, we want to have tooling that can help us uh, to be more productive. And fun, of course. Uh, developers must, must enjoy what they are doing. What is the point of doing something if we, it's not funny? Um, so now let's talk about uh, JavaScript. So, uh, most of you um, are familiar with JavaScript. Uh, it's a dynamic and interpreted language. It's easy and simple to learn. Uh, it's cross-platform. It runs everywhere, uh, server, uh, mobile, uh, browser. Uh, it has a big community. It's the most popular language on GitHub. And it has a continuous evolution. We have like ECMAScript 3, 5, 6, 7, and so on. Um, so let's give a try at, Java, at JavaScript. So basically, uh, we have this class. Uh, everyone can see. So it's, it's a cat, uh, cat class. Uh, and basically, we want to print the name. Anyone wants to guess the output of this uh, of this program? Okay. Any guess? No. Okay. It will just throw an error saying that that method is not a function. Basically, we just misspelled writing the name of the method. Let's give another try. So we fixed the name. Any guesses about the the output? No. Any brave? Cool. That's right. Undefined. Basically, we forget to pass the, the constructor parameter. Well, it happened. So let's give another try. So basically, now uh, we have fixed the, the name. Uh, we have our Garfield cat. And we called the method listen. Any guess about the output? No? OK. It will fail, saying that 
uh, message replace uh, is not a function because we are passing a number and the method is expecting a string. Okay, another try. Okay, we have fixed the, the method, now we are passing a string and we have the desired output. Garfield, I love lasagna. Well, now we are thinking like, I know that it's a simple example, but this kind of errors happen. And if, it will be nice if we could like uh, mitigate this kind of errors. So JavaScript has some problems, of course. Um, lack of type safety, as I showed you before. It's easy to create spaghetti code. Uh, it's also hard to scale. If, if we have uh, like multiple persons changing a, a big project, it starts to be really hard to, to scale the project. And we only have errors in runtime. So for every solution, for every problem, we have a solution. Uh, the solution is, yeah, TypeScript. Uh, so what is TypeScript? TypeScript basically is a, a superset of JavaScript that compiles to plain JavaScript. So basically, we just write uh, TypeScript uh, and then we compile it to, to JavaScript. But here at that, at this image, we can see that we have all features from ECMAScript 5, ECMAScript 6, and much more like types, interfaces, generics, and much more. Okay, types prevent bugs. And here we have the same example before. And if we try to compile this piece of code, we are going to get an error saying that the constructor is expecting an argument. So we can catch these kind of uh, mistakes in compile time. So let's give another try. If we fix the constructor and we are calling the get name and listen, if we try to compile this code, it's saying that uh, get name does not exist uh, and then uh, it's expecting a string, we are passing a number. Also, we have IntelliSense, so um, when we are typing uh, and we are trying to access a, a, an object, we can have like all the properties and methods of that object and a, f uh, a few desc a description that describes that method. So, but how do we have uh, this IntelliSense? The, the answer is definitions. So, a definition uh, are files that describes uh, a library written in JavaScript. It describes all properties and all uh, methods from that library. Um, as you have seen before, um, definitions uh, give you IntelliSense and module typification. Um, it uh, gives us like extra confidence. So for example, if we are using um, version one of a library and we want to update to version two, if we have like the updated definitions and we update it, and if we have like some breaking changes, we will have a compilation uh, error saying that uh, we are using uh, a method that before it, uh, it, it, it needed like two uh, arguments and now it needs three, for example. Uh, yeah, definitions are suffixed by DTS. D means the definition and TS TypeScript. Um, it's community maintained, so the community is responsible to maintain the definitions. And if we want to install a, a definition, we just install it as a normal package. So if you are familiar with NPM, it's just like NPM install, uh, then the name of the definition and uh, save it as a dev dependency. Here is an example. So here we have the definition of core. It's an HTTP library. Um, Basically, we are declaring a module uh, with the name core. It should be the same name of the, the JavaScript library. And then, as you can see, we are just describing uh, the properties and the methods. There are no uh, like implementation here because the implementation stays with the JavaScript library. Here, we just describe um, like the, the methods and properties. So if we are using some kind of fancy library and the definition does not exist, no problem. We can just use it as, as JavaScript, like in JavaScript, but we are not getting any kind of errors or intelligence. But 
if you are a good developer, we can just contribute to the community. We can create that def definitions, and the next developer will thank you for that. So here are some uh, guidelines how we can create uh, definition files. Of course, uh, TypeScript have bad things. Um, we have lack of definitions, have I mentioned before, if the definition does not exist. Also, when we are installing a definition, we need to be aware that that definition is compatible with the, with the library. Because sometimes, if you are using like version two of a library, and we just install the latest definition, and that definition is still in, in version uh, 1.5, we can have problems with that. So uh, make sure that when you install a, a definition, it's compatible with the library that you have. Uh, we have an, an additional step, like we have the transpile time. Uh, some tools can require some extra work. For example, if we are using Istanbul to have coverage, we need to install um, Istanbul remap that basically maps the JavaScript and the TypeScript files. But there are like a lot of good things about using TypeScript. Um, it's easy to learn, especially if you have like a team um, that is comfortable using like C# -sharp or Java, they will feel like comfortable using TypeScript. It's almost the same and they will feel a like natural transition. Uh, it's compatible with, with all versions of JavaScript, so you can, com you can write TypeScript and then compile it to ECMAScript 3, for example. Uh, it's full OOP. It's, next, it's funny that next we are going to have a functional uh, programming talk. Uh, yeah, but it supports interfaces, abstract classes, protected uh, visibility. Uh, as we have seen before, uh, types prevent bugs. Uh, it's easier to um, scale the code and team. For example, if we want to refactor some property, it's much easier using TypeScript. I will show you after. Uh, we have better tooling. Um, tools can like take advantage of definitions, for example, to give some int to the developer, and we are going to feel like more productive. It's open source, so everyone can see the code, everyone can contribute and it's supported by Microsoft. For me, this is a, a big plus. Uh, it's always good to have a big company behind a, a technology, because at least we know that that, that technology uh, will have support and will be maintained for the next years. So, how to TypeScript? It's pretty simple. Uh, basically, we just need to install TypeScript and definitions if necessary. Uh, we, we install it as a normal package, then we are installing the definition. We create our TypeScript file. Then we just need to compile that file and of course write some code. Uh, in this case, we are, writing to ECMAS, to, we are compiling to ECMAScript 5, specifying the target flag. And it will generate a GS file. And basically, we just need to run it as a normal JavaScript file. So what are the... Um, the result of the compilation. Here at this example, uh, we have a class. I don't know if you can see, but we are using like keywords like private, protected. Uh, and as you know, uh, JavaScript does not support private um, or protected uh, visibility. So will TypeScript um, generate some kind of code to have the same behavior in JavaScript? No. It will just compile to plain JavaScript. It's, as you can see, it's um, really uh, simple to, to read. Uh, the reason is if JavaScript wants to simulate, if the TypeScript wants to simulate the same behavior, it needed to generate some code. And that uh, would cause some performance issues sometimes. So the idea is not to uh, generate extra code. We, we have all the, the benefits of protected and private when uh, writing TypeScript. So if we try to access a private method uh, in the TypeScript file, it will get an error in the transpile time. But in JavaScript, we can still access that private method. So compiler configuration. Um, TypeScript uh, compiler supports like multiple options. Uh, here at this link, you can find all of them. 
I will just give you an example. Here uh, we are saying that we, are, we want to compile our code to ECMAScript 6. We want to compile to the folder build. We want to use the module common.js and then we just want to compile the files in the source and test folder. There are like many more uh, options. So debugging. When someone asks you, how do you debug your code? Please do not say console log. I know that it's useful sometimes, but if we want to like, catch some bugs, we really need to like, navigate to the call stack and console log uh, won't help you. Uh, you are just trying to guess where is the problem. Uh, so TypeScript supports uh, debug, of course. Uh, it uses uh, source maps. Um, basically, source maps contains the, the mapping uh, between the JavaScript file and our source, our source file, in this case, TypeScript. Uh, debuggers know how to interpret these files. Uh, basically, a uh, map file, a uh, source, uh, source file, um, source map is a file suffixed by map.js. Uh, here is the example of a source file. Basically, it contains the version of that file, the um, JavaScript file, the path to the source, and basically the mapping is a, is a matrix uh, that is encoded using uh, base64. If, if we decode uh, this line, we are going to see a, a matrix that is a mapping between the JavaScript file and the TypeScript file. We can use a node inspector. If, for example, if we are using TypeScript with Node.js, we can just simply pass the inspect flag and the entry point, and um, we can like debug it normally, or we can use a VS Code, for example. We can also pass the debug port, and here we can see the process uh, that is running. And most of you are familiar with this debug tool. Uh, yeah, probably it's the most famous one. Um, and as you can see, we are debugging the TypeScript code, not the JavaScript. So what is the experience of using TypeScript? Here is the refactor. Basically, we have an interface and we want to refactor that, um, that property, and voila, it changes everywhere. Basically, it finds the references of that interface, and it changes uh, that property everywhere. Here, uh, we are trying to basically set an header in an HTTP uh, response. We have the documentation here at the left side, and then at the right side, we are trying to, to write that, that code. So it will be like much better if we could do it like, just like this. We are just typing and then we have all methods and examples and we need to pass a string uh, as a parameter. Much easier. Um, how about uh, the pipe driver adoption of TypeScript? So it was officially introduced last year in September. We start by giving some internal talks to share the knowledge about the language. Then our internal libraries uh, are written in JavaScript, so we decided to implement all the definitions of that library so that who, are, who, can, who wants to use like that internal libraries basically have the full experience uh, of TypeScript. Then a success case. Uh, we started the project from scratch here in Lisbon. We decided to use TypeScript. And if you want to convince someone to use some technology, it's much easier if we have some success case to convince them. And we are using uh, TypeScript in backend and frontend. And in frontend, we use uh, mostly with React. And today is the second most language used at Pipedrive. And most important, everyone is happy about using TypeScript. So some conclusions. Um, it's easier to, to write and scale um, our code. Also, it increases the developer productivity. It can be used everywhere. So backend, frontend, uh, mobile, if we are using React Native, for example. And 
type, TypeScript is growing fast, really fast, and it's being adopted for many big companies. Here are some references, and yeah, basically.